If the common of your ammeter is connected to the negative in the battery, then your uh, current reading will be the same, but it will always be positive. Okay. Now, what is the uh, reading? It's uh, 0 0.1210 milliamps. Okay. Um, that means it's um, uh, uh, 0 0.1210 times 10 to the minus what? Um, 3 amps. Okay. Is that right? Yeah. Minus 3 amps. Now, it is important to actually use some, when you're doing calculations, to use consistent units. In DC electricity, we have um, uh, three quantities. Current in amps, uh, resistance in ohms, and voltage in volts. And um, um, if we are going to do any calculations to determine um, uh, one quantity from the other two quantities, we have to make sure we use compatible units. And the compatible units for current are amps, not milliamps. So if your reading is in milliamps, you must convert it to amps. Okay. Now, let's disconnect the, the ammeter and reconnect the, our circuit. Current now is still flowing because the switch is still closed. In this diagram now, they want us to connect the ammeter in between R1 and R2. Okay. What do you think uh, uh, the, the current reading will be at this new point? Will it be the same as before? Will it be higher or will it be lower? Well, it will be the same. Why? Because current has only one path to flow in. And uh, because of conservation of, of charge, um, if something, uh, uh, if electrons come out of one end of the battery, the same number of electrons will have to come back to the other end of the battery. Okay. So the current flowing through um, the entire circuit should be uh, the same. So let's quickly verify if that is in fact true. I remove the wire that connects R1 to R2. I again attach our uh, ammeter to this point in the, in, in the diagram. And what do we notice? The current is the same as before. Okay. So the next thing we are asked to do is um, to measure the voltage across R1 and then measure the voltage across R2 and then measure the voltage across R1 and R2 combined. Okay, so we now have to change our multimeter into a voltmeter. And um, we'll, 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 we'll set the voltage setting here to this uh, V with the straight line, not V with the curly line, because it's a DC voltage we'll be measuring. And this particular smart meter tells us um, where our two connections should go. Um, one will go to the common port, and the other will go to the port that says voltage. Okay, so now this uh, multimeter is set to read DC voltage. Now, if we um, attach this voltmeter across R1, and remember, voltmeters are connected in parallel. Okay, why in parallel? Because we want to measure the voltage across components, okay? Um, ammeters are connected in series. Why? Uh, because we have to break the circuit since we want to measure the total current passing through the ammeter. If we let that wire uh, in, in place, then the current would have two uh, uh, paths. It could go through the wire or through the ammeter. And the ammeter then wouldn't be measuring the total current, okay? But voltmeters, they have to be um, connected in parallel. Okay, and right now we'll notice that um, the voltage is much less than approximately one and a half volts of our, of our, ba of our battery. It's about 0.3764 uh, volts. Okay, um, if we connect it now, our voltmeter, to our next resistor, 
you'll see that the voltage now is a little bit higher. Different, but higher. Okay. And if we connect up our voltmeter across both R1 and R2, we see that the voltage is approximately 1.26 or 1.27 almost uh, volts. This is actually, should be, the, the voltage of the battery. Okay. Now, why, if we connect it across our two resistors, is it equal to the voltage of the battery? Well, because when we connected the voltmeter across R1 and R2, what are we actually measuring? The total applied voltage. So that's why the voltage that is lost across R1 and the voltage that is lost across R2, the sum of them will equal to the total voltage, which is actually the voltage of the battery. But if you notice carefully, the voltage of the battery was um, a little bit, a little bit higher than the voltage across R1 and R2. Why is that? Well, in this electrical schematic diagram, the only sources of resistances are R1 and R2. But in reality, is there any resistance in a, in a, in a wire? Well, of course. The resistance is very, very, very small, but nevertheless, because it has a resistance, that resistance will uh, create another voltage loss. So if we were to take the resistances of the wires and even the resistances of the switch and even the battery itself, we'll find out that the voltage loss, not only across R1 and R2, but across all the other components, the sum will equal the voltage of the battery exactly. Okay, so now you know how to use a multimeter, how to connect it as a voltmeter and ammeter into your circuit. And um, the value sum that we got for voltage across R1 and R2 and uh, the current through the entire circuit will be different um, in your case because the resistance values that we'll be using are going to be different in each uh, uh, table. Okay, now let's continue on. And let me tell you something about the rated values of these resistors. If you take one of these resistors, you will notice that it has color code bands. There's a total of four color code bands on this resistor. Starting closest to the edge of the resistor, we see the colors are red, violet, red, and silver. Usually the fourth band is a metallic color either silver or gold. Now, what do these uh, um, uh, color code bands correspond to? If you look at the table that's in your lab manual, you will notice that um, the first two bands are digits. So what are the digits the first two for the first two bands? See, first two bands? The first one was red, and red corresponds to two. And the other band was a violet, which corresponds to 7. So the, our first two values are 27. 27. The third band, which is a red, is an exponent. In other words, the resistance will be 27 times 10 to the power of red. And um, what is the exponent for red, the exponent value? It's 2. So our resistor here is rated as 2,000. 700 ohms, or 27 times 10 to the 2 ohms. Now, the fourth band is our precision band. You notice that it's silver here. Silver corresponds to 10%. So that means that this rated value may not necessarily be 2,700 ohms, but it could be as much as 270 ohms more, or 270 ohms less. And the manufacturer can still get away by rating it as um, 2,700 uh, 2, um, yeah, ohm resistor. Okay. We conclude uh, this part of the experiment by constructing 
a circuit with resistors in parallel. And um, these three circuits are exactly the same, except this circuit and this circuit, the ammeter is located at, uh, uh, is connected to two different branches. So this way we get to actually see what the current is after it's split at that junction point A here, okay? 